All right, all right. Welcome back to the final Unfiltered Cinematics of 2019. We've been on a movie blitz. It's been a really, really good year for movies. Especially uh, the end of the year. Yeah, last Slow quarter. Start. Yeah, fourth quarter of 2019 jam-packed with good movies uh it was really fun and this time we went to go see uncut gems um you know the drill we break down the plot we give our hot takes and then we rank it at the end uh full disclosure i went to see this movie on christmas night and then i saw it again with brandon this is my second time seeing it this is brandon's first time um, Adam Sandler, KG, Lakeith Stanfield, um, Mike Francesca. Mike Francesca was in it. Yeah, some really cool the characters. The weekend was in it. Um, a lot going on in this movie. So um, let's let's kind of break it down, and then we'll give our thoughts. So really, it comes down to and like like always, brands the plot, guys. So correct me if I'm wrong here. Fill in the gaps. But we have basically a degenerate gambler who is who is he owns his own jewelry shop sort of thing high-end jewelry high-end jewelry um lakeith stanfeld's character uh damani he brings in celebrities and high profile people into the shop to buy jewelry um he has his own thing on the side he's trying to sell watches and they're fake watches we end up learning and um really just adam sandler's character uh howard ratner he just has so much shit going on so many obstacles every which way um he he's basically caught in a web where right he it's a very tangled web yeah, he takes money to pay off other people that he owes money and right. it, it's like a continuous cycle that he can't get out of so he's continuously like in debt with at least someone right um so he keeps trying to do these kind of quick schemes basically to get rich to right. pay off all we, of his debts. we also see these kind of goons like these like mobby type characters where they're leaning on him for the money um but really it comes like it we're we're really into his world when he gets this gem um it's uh what's it called opus and oh yeah like i don't even know we're just gonna call it the gem uh, it's like this rock and there's a spectrum of colors and they he says you can see the whole universe in it He br uh, Lakeith Stanfield's character brings Kevin Garnett to the shop um, He gets the rock Kevin or Adam Sandler is so excited about it. He shows KG KG looks into it and he sees his whole life flash He it's talking to him. He it's a sign and then he's looking at it and the glass breaks and he thinks that's even more of a sign He says I need to have this but the rock is tied to an auction for Howard, Adam Sandler's character. And there's just so much shit going yeah. on. So much shit. And at that point, he's like, all right, let me, this is KG. He says, let me borrow it. Then he gets, uh, Adam Sandler gets KG's ring as collateral. And he goes to pawn it. And that just becomes even more shit. Just shit after ob obstacle, after obstacle, after obstacle. Um, very, very chaotic. Yeah. I think that's the one word that stands out for me with this movie. Um, then where do we go, I guess, plot-wise from that? I mean, we don't have to hit every yeah, obstacle. Uh, but basically, the other big like kind of plot points, uh, Adam Sandler's character, Howie, yeah. um, has kind of a side piece. Him and right. his wife are going to get a divorce that's a good, at, uh, yep. at some point. So the whole time he's got this side piece in a separate apartment. Who also works for him yep. at the shop. And she's also like a photographer. I don't really know so what her she occupation is. Does something with the weekend right before the weekend blows up. Weekend tries to uh, get with her. Right. Howie walks in, sees it, gets in a fight. Um, he, he gets in like twelve fights throughout this movie. <laughs> yes. He goes yes. to another big one. He goes to his kids like play. Um, during this, the two um, goons goons um, take him. Uh, they strip him naked, throw him in the back of his wife's uh, Mercedes. Um, so that's when she starts to like really understand that like something's like very very right. wrong. Right. Um, there's also uh, in, in this scene we find out how we had made a big 16 parlay bet 
uh, that he won, but um, the goons found out that they used money that he was supposed to, you know, pay, pay them, them back. Yeah. Um, so they called the bookie and actually stopped the bet, so he didn't win. Right. Um, so, and that all kind of leads up. There, there's a lot of other stuff, I yeah, think. Yeah, like, it's just cause and effect after it. cause and effect yeah. after cause and effect. And it all leads to kind of like the kind of the climax, the ending of it, um, where he gets uh, his his side piece to go to. Um, but well, should we say about the auction first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can so, auction. so in, in between one. what Brandon was just about to say, the auction I think is the next kind of big plot point. Um, obviously, he's trying to sell this rock at an auction because he goes back and forth with KG. KG wants it, but he needs to do this auction. Um, there's another obstacle where it was, um, um, what's the word? Appraised. Appraised for a much, much, much less than what he thought it was going to be. Um, but then he tells KG to go to the auction and place a bid. KG does. He has his dad. I think it's his dad's his dad. A or, relative. I think it's his, I think it's his uncle, uncle. Something. He has him up the bids um, and to try to jack up the price. Jack up the price. KG gets to his limit. He says no more, and it ends up his relative has to. He went one hundred ninety grand. One hundred ninety for this rock. Um, then you know Howard knows that kg wants it he says if you so he takes it back from his uncle or whatever and says i'll give it to you kg if you give me the money and then then go to your yeah other so he gets one hundred sixty-five thousand dollars from kg he then gives that to a side piece to take it to the sports book to bet on the celtics to win game seven um, against the sixers kg to have 26 points and rebounds combined and for the Celtics to win the opening, opening tip, tip. Uh, which is a wild, wild right because that on a parlay that is the one that you like can lose that right can away. Fuck up and you just be You're so done. down. And, oh, that so he bets one hundred fifty five thousand, sixty five thousand dollars to win one point two million dollars. I think it was yeah, something like that. Um, so then the final kind of scenes, he's got the goons locked in between. Right, because um, the whole throughout the whole thing in his shop, you have to buzz him out. They yeah. made a point to yeah. show that, and so that they were in that shop getting ready to beat him up and they were about to leave to try and find the girl and he and locks them in, in like the, the little doorway so they're in there they're watching the celtics game celtics right. win the tip um kg eventually gets to um the 26 points that he needs and then the Celtics end up winning, so he wins one point two million dollars. Right. He tells them, you know, finally, like I can pay you guys back. Like all of this is over. He unlocks it, and then we get the big twist. They, Boom! The good shoots him in the head, kills Adam Sandler, um, and then they basically take all of his jewelry, and then they also shoot his relative I dad. Think, yeah, I think it's no, his, no, it's, that one is his brother-in-law. Who is also a goon. Who is yeah. also a goon. We yeah. failed to mention that, but that was interesting too. Yeah. Um, so, that's how it ends. That's how it ends. Really crazy movie. <clears throat> I'm not going to lie. The first time I saw it, I felt like I was way more shook than Brandon is at this point. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. Tell me your thoughts walking out of this movie. Are you surprised? Yeah. Did you see that coming? Yeah, let's just... So, uh, yeah. first of all, you're more of a sport nut than me, and I feel like you remember that the Celtics won. So, like... I mean, right away you're like, well, they won. Like yeah. for me, I'm so in like the movie entrances me that like I forget that. Yeah. So like I'm, it, it, my adrenaline is pumping so hard. I'm like, God damn, is he gonna win? <laughs> he does win, and then the fact that he gets shot, holy shit! I did yeah. not see that coming. Let, um, let, it's wild. Let, yeah, I want to talk about a couple of things. Yeah, let's talk. Uh, one, let's talk about a twenty four. Um, they, they're the ones who produced this movie. I don't know who directed it. The Sad Feed Brothers. Okay, they. The, the camera work that they use throughout this movie uh, helps, like, accelerate how chaotic right. and, like, fast-moving this movie is. It's almost unsettling. Like, the right. first hour, you, like, you kind of feel, like, almost, like, motion sickness to it. Um, it takes some getting used to, but with, like, the story they're trying to tell and, and how chaotic they're trying to make it seem, the, the way they shoot it is unbelievable there's times where like it's spinning it's rotating really right. quickly on different characters and i don't it know just if, feels really chaotic and i don't know if you noticed but uh i saw it with my parents my, my family yesterday 
And one of their complaints, which I actually liked because I think it adds to the cha the chaos, is it always felt like like three people were talking at once. Yeah. Like I feel like that it was very intended. Like yeah. it's meant to everyone saying fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, yeah. and there's like three people talking at once. But that is to add to the chaos, which mm -hmm. is very intended. I think and it's in the writing, <laughs> it's in the direction. I think it's meant to be there. Um, also, before I forget this, I think all of that chaos, the, the camera work, the three people talking at once, the fast pace, I think it's meant to make you feel what it feels like to gamble. Yeah. The, gambling is not my vice, but that... Yeah, watching it's, this it's movie, watching this movie is the closest I think I'm going to get to a de <laughs> degenerate gambling. Like it was fucking insane. Yeah, straight up. Uh, there was one really cool scene I wanted to point out too. Um, there's a scene where they throw Adam Sandler's character into water. Right. And the the water sound is loud. so loud. Yeah. Uh, it's actually really incredible right. to listen to. I thought that was um, a really cool kind of like uh, effect. I'm wondering if we're about to get. Oh, he drove by. Um, we're good. Yeah, we're good. We're in the parking lot. Um, that was really well done. I really enjoyed that just to, like, make you feel, like, what he was going through. And I think that's, too, the fast-pacedness. Right. Like, you want to feel the adrenaline that he's going through, kind of the despair and, like, the fast-paced stuff that's going on with his life. So right. uh, just hats off to them. I, th I thought from that part it was really well done. Um, another th aspect I really liked was the music in this movie was yeah. it was awesome. It right. takes you back to this movie set in 2012, um, and it really it kind of takes you back to that with the weekend. We right. get the Meek Mill song, the Amen We have song, the old Kendrick in old there. Kendrick, yeah, it was right. so the, the the sound uh, of the movie was really really cool too. Right, and I thought it was also interesting how, like how they ended it with the the big twist of him yep. getting shot. Um, obviously, I mean, like like I you, said, like I said, I'm not a gambler, so like. The fact that he wins huge and like you're just like oh my god I feel so yeah, happy for this yeah, guy yeah, finally, but yes. then it's a vice yeah. and you get fucked you know yeah. by he gets killed so it's just a, a total 180 and I feel like it's really stepping into shoes as a fucking degenerate gambler right. there's difference between just gambling for fun and degenerate gambling he's a degenerate gambler yeah. and I feel like we really stepped into that world and it was it was really well done too because you the whole movie you just it's like this like you just feel like how's he getting out of this like there's right. no way right and then he finally does and you're like oh, thank god i can finally breathe in this damn right. movie and then he gets <laughs> shot and killed and you're just like what what the fuck <laughs> right 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 so, it's almost like like oh yeah. like you're just pissed. it's maddening yeah. right yeah it's so, crazy uh other thing, Sandler, absolutely unreal performance right. out of him. I thought he the performance it. of his life. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think so. Uh, he was he was spectacular in it. Um, we have to ask the question. We have to whether yeah. it's before or after we rank it. No, we can ask now. Okay. I think the, gets, the main question is he going to get nominated for best actor at the Oscars? Uh, everyone's asking the question. I think whether the movie is good enough to give it the push is the question. I think he yeah, really it, killed it. Um, this is his best performance that I can think of. Yeah. So I think he, I, I see him getting nommed, but not the movie. Yeah. That I, would, I can see that. that I be, can see that. Um, he, he carries the movie. I mean, the movie, I don't know if he's not in a, I think he's in every single scene except for like the specific basketball scenes that they show. Yeah. On but, the screen. right. And I would say, I think he was, I don't want to say meant for this role, but I think they had him in mind. He is Jewish. I think it was it, like a lot of him being, him being Jew, like, the character being Jewish is very prevalent in yep. the movie. They have Passover. They show you what happens in Passover. I would even I would even bet that the Safi brothers are Jewish. I don't know that, but I could, I would bet that. Um, I would bet that. No pun intended. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, it just felt very in place. And I think when given good material, I think Adam Sandler is a good actor. Mm -hmm. um, he's made some shitty movies. But Some I, of that on purpose, I, 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 I really, really hope he gets a nom here. I'm really rooting for the guy. So there's that. Should we get to the rankings? Let's do you have any flaws rankings. with this movie, I guess, before we do that? Um, it can be chaotic at times. Um, at some points, it, I, I was kind of reminded, this is kind of a weird parallel to the movie, but I was kind of reminded of The Revenant um, in this movie in the sense that, like, you just feel, like, despair for Leo's character in that movie, and you're almost just like, okay, like, something good happened to this guy right. and so like you you kind of feel that and that's kind of the point of the movie but 
it, it it kind of lingered i think a little bit it was okay i think it was a touch too long um but even that's a nitpick i think that's a nit I, I think that's a nitpick but also i just i just love from a like a storytelling and writing standpoint like i'm a screenwriter and we're taught to throw as many obstacles as you can at your as at your character and just make it really hard for them and that's what they fucking did in this yep. movie even just like so many things but that the one thing that pops out to me and it wasn't really an obstacle but it potentially could have been do you remember when he uh lakee stanfield is pissed at him pours the lean in the fish tank, the fish tank. and then on all top on top of all of that he gets a call from his colonoscopy yeah. that he's like he's like what am i good am i good and he's like yeah you're good and they're like oh my god did he have colon cancer <laughs> like there's just so much yeah. going on it's just wild yeah so i really think it's really good writing so yeah. um okay let's so, do it so to the ranking let me ask you this question with your rank okay did you have a score coming in mind out of the first time you see it yes and did it change the second time so so what was your initial ranking? Initial ranking, this is a hot take, and I'm going to stick by it. I'm going to stick with my score. Okay. So I'll just say that from right now. Do you, do you just want me to reveal? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is t tapping into my first initial uh, watch of this. Um, it's a 9.5, and that, that might be super fucking high, but this was an adrenaline-packed movie. I was sh sweating when I first saw this movie, and my jaw was on the floor walking out of it the first time. Obviously, it, took, it, it, it wasn't the same the second time, so probably would drop a couple points, maybe. But I'm tenths of a point. I'm yeah, tenths of a point. But I'm sticking with nine point five. I think it, it's a definitely top ten. It's a definite top ten movie of the year in my mind. Spoiler. Um, so yeah, nine point five. Probably a hot take, but I like this movie. Okay. For me, it's an eight point eight. Um, I just think it lingered a little bit in parts. Um. Sandler carries this movie. I, totally. If, if this isn't Sandler, I don't know. One, it doesn't get the hype that it's getting. And two, I don't think we get the type of movie that they were trying to portray, which they, they did a great job of. Right. Um, absolute adrenaline rush. Unreal um, storylines. It is. It's, it's. You mentioned the direction, the directing. Yep. You meant. I mean, we talked about the writing. I think all of that falls into place, and it's perfect for this movie. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Um, again, I just. Th I, one, I think this uh, movie fell a little bit victim to the hype train. Um, they were pumping this movie hard. Oh, they I were. Mean, on social media, all of the ads uh, was uncut gems. I mean, that's all you saw. Um, so I think. For me, the hype train got a little bit out ahead of where it actually was. Okay. Again, it's a great movie. Eight point eight is not a no slight. Right. Um, it's one of those where if maybe I didn't know anything about it and just kind of walked in, maybe it's a nine one nine two for me. Um, but with the with the expectation of it, we talked about coming right. out. People were throwing out that KG should could get a best supporting actor nom. He's nah. like the fourth best actor in this movie. I mean, he wasn't bad. Yeah, I just, wasn't bad. I mean, it was, he, it was basketball and a couple dialogue lines. Right. It's like, I, I, it wasn't anything spectacular. I mean, he was fine. And I really like Lakeith Stanfield. Uh, I think, I lie. think he deserves a best supporting actor nom over right. KG. Right. Um, but I, you know, I thought the weekend would be a little bit more important of a role. He really yeah. just sang, and that was it. Right. Um, got in a fight. Yeah, got in a fight. So, um, again, really, really, really enjoyed this movie. Yeah. Um, it's probably a top 10 movie for me as well. Um, but 8.8 .8 is my, my final ranking. All right. There you go. 9.5. A little hype. 8.8. .8, uh, it's been a fun year for movies. Absolutely. 2019. Look out for our best of 2019 podcast. See where uncut gems. See where ranks see in where our it falls. 10. See where it falls. Thank you for watching. This is unfiltered cinematic. Subscribe, like, retweet, follow. You know the drill. Trey Lessie of the Dawn of Entertainment and Brandon Ogden, and we'll be back for more in 2020. Bet safe. Oh.